Hey guys, thanks for coming back again if you have subscribed and thanks for always coming back every time. And if you are yet to subscribe, please endeavor to click on the subscribe button and also on the bell beside it. That will notify you when we drop our new video. We have done a video based on GCE of physics practical last week. Now we're going to give with brother another one on chemistry practical. Actually, all is alternative to practical. And as you know, that alternative to practical doesn't involve any physical practical work, as we have explained in our previous video. So what we're going to do here is we are going to look at how alternative to practical question is being set in chemistry. And we're going to concentrate more on titration. Why? The qualitative analysis will be explained briefly. So now let's look at the typical question of how the alternative to practical question in chemistry is solved as an example or a likely question. So I'm looking at this, we just want to consider uh, an experiment that has been performed already and then the manner of which the reading was taken was given to us in a diagram and from the diagram we are going to take the burette reading instead of lie. So this is how the experiment is being performed according to this procedure here. So we have solution A of 0.095 mole per dm cube, that's molarity HCl. So which means solution A is an acid, is a solution of HCl, was titrated with against 25 centimeter cube of sodium hydroxide of a known concentration. So which means the concentration of the base, which is sodium hydroxide, is unknown. So now using methyl orange as indicator, actually the the uh, uh, titration should be done with methyl orange or any other indicator that supports the uh, reaction between strong acid and strong base. So, in the, okay, the procedure was repeated for the consistent value. Actually, any indicator can be used when you're titrating strong acid with strong base. But here we use methyl orange according to the experiment when it was performed. So. Um, the procedure was repeated for three consistent values of VA. VA happens to be the average volume of acid used. So, we are given a diagram where we are going to take our readings, and the reading is not taken live as the experiment proceeds. So, we are given a diagram where the reading will be taken because we are not the one involved in the experiment. The account of the experiment was just given to us in the procedure and the person who performed the experiment, or let's put it this way, this is an examination, but let's just say the experiment has been performed before all this was derived. So let's consider, you. the first thing you need to do when you talk about alternative to practical, you know, you have to create your table. And to create your table, you create the table from diagrams, not your direct reading. So what you need to do is you study the diagram very well. You study the diagram, then you'll be able to what to to bring out your values from it. Now let's look at this. The first titer according to this diagram. So what I'm seeing here indicates that the longest line is on zero, so which means the Bourette reading here is zero. So which means this is the initial and this is the final. So the same thing we have the initial and the final, and we have this to be initial and here to be final. Okay, sorry, this is the initial and here is the final. This is the initial and here is the final. So now, which means in my table, my initial reading for the first titration is going to be 0, 0. So I'm actually 0, 0, 0. Don't forget, red reading should be in two decimal places, just like the way you perform the experiment. All procedures still remain the same. So now, the final reading here is as we count, this is 25. Going down to this point, we are about getting to 26. So we have 25, 25.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 6, 0.7, and this is 25.8. So we can actually record this as 25.80. Good. And when you subtract this, you are going to have, have 25.80. Good. Now let's go to the second title. In the second title, you're surprised that the, the initial is not 25.80. Yeah, that is correct according to the diagram because if you look at the burette, the burette is made up of 50 in volume. 
And if the barrette is 50 and we already use 25.8, which is almost 26, so which means for the second titration, we might not be able to get up to 25 again. And the first titration has already given us an idea about how the experiment will look like. That's the, the volume the, the base will always want to take will be closer to this. And the differences should not be more than 0 0.2 plus or minus, so which means we have to refill the burette a little bit up to a stage where we're going to have 25 discharge from the second titration. So now we, that is the reason why the second is starting from, this is 21, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So which means the initial here is 21.8. So out of 50, you've used 21.8 which means you will still have up to 25. Actually, the barrette will stop up to 21.8. So we can assume that the initial here is what? 21.80. Now, let's move to the final reading for the second titer. We have 46, 47. Actually, the longest line falls on 47, so it means the final reading here is what? 47.00. If I subtract this from this, what will I have? So I think this is zero, then I have uh, two, then I have, um, that is point, I'm gonna have six, then I have two. So I'm gonna have 26.20. So the difference is not quite much. Yeah, the difference is not quite much. So we can still manage this. Okay, now let's proceed to the third titer. We have seven <coughs> as the initial here, so which means the bullet has been refueled up to seven again. So we have 7.00, then what will be the final? The final is 32, this is 32, 32.1, 32.2, 32.3. So we have 32.30. So subtracting these, what am I going to have? I'm going to have 25.30. Actually, the difference is, is quite big. I, I do not agree with this, but this is what the reading has given to us. I think I'm going to use that like that. So, uh, oh, sorry, haven't I made a mistake? This is supposed to be 25 in my addition. Yeah. Yeah, and I have... Um, 32.30, then 7 points. Okay, actually, that's 7. So we have just 25.30 differences. Okay, then we have 25.20, 25.30. This one is quite much closer to each other than this. So these two are very, very closer compared to this. So we can still find the average volume of the three, so, or probably just two of it. So that we'll be able to get a result. Actually, you can see now how the burette reading is being taken from the diagram. So which means the alternative to practical just have to do with taking readings without experiments from diagrams. And the thing that you know the procedure of the experiment, you should be able to know do that. Actually, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm gonna move to the calculation now, but I got something to discuss like. What is the color of methyl orange in the basic medium? Everybody knows that is yellow. Then what is the color in acidic medium and the neutral medium? In the acidic medium, it takes pink. In the neutral medium, it takes pink. So which means all that. There are basic things we need to know. Then what are the procedures that has to do with the experiment? Because that might be a miscellaneous question at the end of the uh, uh, major question. Um, the procedures is you use your for um, acid to raise the barrette, you use your base to rinse the pipette. You shouldn't use water for the two because it might dilute the solution you are adding. Then we have some other procedures which you can read ahead about and all that. So now let's slide to the calculation stage and see what we get. Okay. Now, we were told to find the average volume of A used, which means I'm going to have my VA. So to find my VA, I write up the three values, and probably I may use two because the two is quite more, is quite close to each other. So let me use two of this. So I have 
All divided by 2. Actually, I use 2 of the reading, so this divided by 2. So if I have this, I'm going to have 50 point five zero all divided by 2. So and that will give us 25.25 centimeter cube. So this is VA. That's VA. Good. So now what next? The next question says we should find the concentration of B in a um, mole per dm cube. So how do we find concentration of B in mole per dm cube? How do we do that? I don't find this. Then you use the formula CA, VA over CB, VB equals NA over NB. Actually, to get your NA and NB, you have to write the equation of the reaction. And the equation of the reaction is between uh, hydric hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So I can easily put that down to add this. I can easily add HCl plus NaOH. And that gives NaCl plus H2O. Now you can see the equation is balanced, so which means the number of moles of hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide is 1, 1. So Na is going to be 1, Nb is going to be 1. And Va is your this, this is Va. And the Vb is the volume of the pipette because we were told that it was titrated against 25 centimeters of the base. So and what else? We were also given uh, Ca, which is 0 0.095. Then you determine your CB, provided you have VB. VB is the volume of the pipette. VA is your title value. NA over NB is gotten from the equation, the number of moles, and CA is this. Then you make CB the sort of formula you solve out. Then that is the solution to this. Now, number of moles of B. How do you find the number of moles of B? Everyone knows that number of moles is equal to concentration times volume. So which means number of moles of B N B is going to be equals to actually number of mole of B in equation is what we're using here. But considering the number of mole of B in that particular reaction we're talking about, we say number of mole equals what the concentration of B times volume of B. C B. So actually, just this is the number of mole of B. So then we find that out immediately after finding C B. So that is quite good about it, and that is all about how to run the experiment based on titration. Now let me just say something about qualitative analysis. In qualitative analysis, I think you know that we have of two types. We have the qualitative organic, and we have the qualitative inorganic. So talking about the inorganic, we break it down into three. We have the test for gas, the test for anion, and the test for cation. So the first thing you need to know uh, is identification of gases. You know, gases are divided into three. We have the acidic gases, we have the basic gases, and we have the neutral gases. Only three neutral gases exist. That is water vapor, hydrogen, and oxygen. So once you test for a gas with the litmus paper and there is no response, so you should know that the gas should either be hydrogen, oxygen, or water vapor. So then the confirmatory test for each one will determine just like oxygen, what do you do to oxygen to confirm oxygen is it's uh, it's it's rekindled a, gl a glowing splinter you can check one of our video where we make use of the test for oxygen then we have a um, hydrogen actually that one is forms with a pop sound then water vapor you know when you introduce um, copper sulfate to it it turns blue so that is the confirmatory test for those gases then we have only one basic gases and that is ammonia if you test the gas with the litmus paper and it turns red litmus paper blue, so that is ammonia gas, no doubt. Then all the acidic gases are the most many. So then we have to learn their confirmatory test. And however, the type of gas exists in a particular reaction gives a great information about the anion present. Just like if I'm having CO3 to minus in a solution, 
then in process of identifying a gas definitely i should be expecting co2 out of that solution so that once i test for co2 that has given me a great information that co3 to minus is present in the solution so all those things you need to know and what you would need to tackle um, qualitative tests as far as alternative to practical is consigned is you would need to study the confirmatory test of all the gases all the cations and all the anions i know the cation analysis you have either flame test and we have the oxidizing and reducing uh, reagents will be, will be used to identify them then we also have the anion test where you make use of the precipitating reagents and um, we have the precipitating reagents and we have reagents that is used for um, the analysis so you just identify the confirmatory test of each anion and cation then you would be able to study you know so when you see a question where okay take for instance to identify co3 to minus i knew that on adding hcl to the salt or solution of the salt and there is evolution of gas which is co2 and the gas was confirmed co2 because it sounds like water here okay? that has given me a great information about this so then i can decide to add bacl to a solution to form a precipitate and once the precipitate is formed that has given me an idea about this so those are the facts those are the basic facts you need about qualitative analysis so thanks for watching please subscribe to this channel it's free thank you